The White House National Security Team reportedly has reviewed a plan to send some 120,000 troops to the Middle East should Iran ever attack American forces. I was just talking about this a few moments ago uh, with Rich Edson at the State Department. Now more. President Trump went after the New York Times report, but not totally dismissing the idea. Watch it. I think it's fake news, okay? Now, would I do that? Absolutely. But we have not planned for that. Hopefully, we're not going to have to plan for that. And if we did that, we'd send a hell of a lot more troops than that. Dan Hoffman joins me now, former chief of the CIA's Middle East Department and a Fox News contributor. Good to see you today. So you the too. president says, would he do it? Absolutely. And do you think it's at the point where we should be talking about it? Is it necessary, potentially? Yeah, it is absolutely necessary to talk about it. Listen, I, I served 30 years in the U.S. government, and the one thing I can tell you about my work with the Department of Defense is they plan for all sorts of scenarios. When things go sideways, they need to be able to take that plan off the shelf and present it to policymakers for executive action. In this case, there's also an element of messaging Iran, which has stepped up their threats to us, kinetic threats in the region and other threats as well. We need to make it absolutely clear we're ready to respond. That's what deterrence is all about. It's a clear message to the Iranians. Dan, is Iran acting differently than before we pulled out of the agreement that the European allies and others are still part of? I think they are. Uh, look, just recently they've threatened to um, enrich uranium to weapons grade levels. They're threatening our European allies to withdraw collaboration on stemming the flow of migrants and drugs from the Middle East. And now we have credible uh, kinetic threats to our people in the Persian Gulf and the region writ large. So I think there's two reasons the Iranians are doing this. One is to, in their view at least, strengthen their negotiating uh, posture on the nuclear deal. Uh, and the second, I think, is that they they really understand that there's a bit of discontent in Iran over their free, free falling economy and they want to make the United States out to appear to be the scapegoat to try to take the sting out of the discontent among their own citizens. I, I want to talk deeper about the threat that they pose to us now that we have sent B-52 bombers and a strike force, a, a, you know, a, a critical uh, amount of battlefield assets, if you will. But first, I want to hear from Iran's ambassador to the U.N., because, Dan, he responded to the report that the White House had perhaps reviewed military plans against Iran. Watch. These are all psychological warfare, in our opinion. We are not in the business of trying to create a conflict in our neighborhood, uh, because nobody, nobody is going to, to have benefit from, from such a conflict in our region, except for a few, as I explained earlier, some people in Washington and, and some countries in our neighborhood. I, I sort of feel like he's trying to make us out to be the big monster. They are still the country that threatens Israel on the regular, right? Yeah, I think Foreign Minister Zarif should have paid attention to his own president, Rouhani, who said publicly that the United States presence in the Persian Gulf used to be considered a threat and is now an opportunity, meaning he's saying publicly that Iran would consider targeting us lethally, kinetically. That's a deadly serious threat, and we have responded in kind, as we should, with... Mm. With a, with a clear measure of deterrence, saying that we're going to bring out the USS Abraham Lincoln and the B-52s, and we've got a plan on the shelf with 120,000 U.S. troops. Now, if you attack us, you'll pay the price. And I don't think Iran would be so foolish as to do that. That would be regime suicide. But this is the best we can do, I think, to prevent a miscalculation on Iran's part. They know what they're getting into if they make a misstep. Well, wow, that's really putting it plain. Uh, Dan Hoffman, thank you very much for your expertise and your time today.